IPHA's Interprofessional Health Talk, an interview series focused on showcasing interprofessionalism through insightful discussions with various professionals and students within the health sector. We hope to expose students to different career paths and skill sets so that they can make an, a more informed decision about their future. I'm Taylor. And I'm Casey. Our guest today is a radiation oncology medical physicist at the Ottawa Hospital and is also a co-founder of a medical virtual reality startup. Welcome, Dr. LaRussa. It's so great to have you today. Oh, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Awesome. So to start, can you tell us what a radiation oncology medical physicist is? Yeah, um, it's probably easiest to kind of go down the hierarchy of medical physics. Um, in medical physics is a domain of physics and other biophysical sciences and biomedical sciences that apply, um, that concerns itself with the use um, of energy applying medical devices for diagnostic and therapeutic purposes. That's very technical and uh, reasonably precise um, explanation based on how best I can recall. Um, it defined by various professional organizations, uh, but I can break it down a little bit. So energy applying medical devices are things like um, uh, medical imaging scanner technology, like CT scanners, uh, MRI scanners, PET scanners. Uh, they apply energy to the human body and we can use the signals that we measure um, to, to create images from that. It's interesting how you started off in chemistry and then like mm -hmm. went into the field. That is cool. So I think a lot of people in the medical community kind of have like their career set out from like right from the get go. Right. So I always love hearing people who it changes as they go. Much harder to do now, unfortunately, I think. Yeah. No, you're so right. <laughs> um, can you tell us a bit about what virtual reality in the medical field looks like? I know you mentioned before some applications with like using it to read medical images to construct the 3D patient um, anatomy. Can you kind of touch on like, yeah, what right. that looks like? Sure. So I guess uh, in the bigger picture, there is a sort of this unmet need or there's for a long time in healthcare and in medicine, there's been an unmet need for 3D visualization of patient anatomy uh, so i mean and by that i mean patient specific anatomy um what we typically do is we we do diagnostic imaging of uh of patients so you'll get a request for a ct scan or an mri scan and those images are going to be reviewed by radiologists and other referring physicians uh, and when you look at those images uh, there's 3d information there but we look at it on 2D screens we, and we scroll through cross-sectional uh, image cross-sections of that 3D information. I'm not quite sure if you're able to uh, visualize what I'm saying, but um, this may even be reasonably well portrayed on, on you know, popular TV programs of, about um, hospital environments and that sort of thing. So, Physicians and other clinicians are left to construct that 3D picture of their patient anatomy in their minds for certain cases. And that can be quite difficult for, um, you know, certain situations. So medical virtual reality is sort of an attempt at bringing that 3D visualization and making it easier um, to see that anatomical information in 3D. 3D visualization kind of started uh, with medical 3D printing. So very carefully segmenting regions of interest in medical images to construct 3D models of patient anatomy and then sending that to a 3D printer. And then um, a physician can hold that anatomical model in his or her hand. Um, so virtual reality and augmented reality and other uh, advanced visualization technologies 
are sort of the digital uh, version of that. Uh, so that's some of the research things that I've gotten into in the last couple of years with my colleague and good friend, Justin Sutherland, and we, he and I have a, a commercial venture uh, that was spun out of the Ottawa hospital where we work. That's really cool. I've always been so intrigued by the, like 3D printing in the medical field. So that's really awesome what you're doing. I've never heard of virtual reality used in that context before. So yeah, I look forward to seeing what you do in the future. <laughs> Okay, so this is just a, a very short two minute video that showcases how our medical virtual reality application works. So this application allows you to read in a patient medical image of some kind, most commonly a CT scan or an MRI scan, and then draw regions or volumes of interest on that scan um, to create 3D models of patient anatomy. Um, you know, just showcasing some of the changes to the 3D visualization that you can apply, clipping planes to look at cross sections and to view inside models that you create. Here's a bowel, here's a cardiac case. And all the models we create, we can export um, if you wanted to print in 3D. Wow. So these are just little clips and short snapshots of how that all works. That was the, the entire video. That's amazing. I mean, that's really incredible. And then you mentioned how you could like send that and 3D print that as well. Like that's amazing. That's just like the, the, the handle. Uh, it's Realize Medical is the name of our company. Okay. But um, here I just have some, some images that I've put together from our advanced visualization research that we, our, our lab called the Realize Lab at the Ottawa Hospital what we call TOH. Um, are you able to see uh, basically what looks like a PowerPoint slide and three images of a brain? Yeah. Okay, so again, this is just showing um, on the top left <clears throat> a cross-sectional image of a 3D MRI scan or a 3D volume containing an MRI image. And overlaid on top of that is a 3D model of the brain and a brain tumor with the surrounding vasculature. And I have two other uh, images of that brain model with different types of visualization effects applied to it. Various levels of transparency and opacity. Um, shown here is an example of a cardiac case where we've segmented, you've taken a, a CT angiography of a patient um, and we've used that scan to create a model of that patient's heart, including all of the cardiac substructures, the left and right ventricle, left and right atrium, uh, pulmonary artery, pulmonary vein, um, and the surrounding myocardium, which is in light purple. And there's another example of a detailed heart model that we created from another scan um, on the left. And on the right is the same heart model, I believe, but just showing the blood pool um, and then all of the surrounding lung tissue, spine, and ribcage. Uh, again, that was created from a CT and geography scan as well. Here's just another a model. We created a detailed model of a uh, patient's abdomen showing the uh, large intestine and that sort of transparent um, red blob. <laughs> again, a 2D view doesn't do it justice, but also shown as the, the pelvic crest. Uh, the tops of the, the left and right um, femurs, the femoral head, uh, and both kidneys. On the right, you can see um, the position of the user's head looking at that model in virtual reality. And you have two clipping planes that show cross sections of the, of the CT scan that intersect those planes and were used to create that model. So the images are co-registered with the models themselves. I think in this last example, I just have um, some images of a, of a soft tissue sarcoma in the right thigh of a patient shown in that little purple blob, showing also the, the femur, um, the acetabulum, and, and the surrounding musculature. Um, and there's some bony anatomy as well, as well as a ghosting of a, or sort of the outline of the, of the patient's uh, skin anatomy. 
Um, at the bottom is that same sarcoma with all the muscle tissue model that made fully transparent and just showing the underlying CT scan that it was used, that was used to create it. Just moving on, so our club, like our main focus is around interprofessionalism in the healthcare field. So in your mind, what's the importance of interprofessionalism in your field? Well, I think in general, um, interprofessionalism in healthcare is hugely important. There's a very big push within the medical physics community uh, to take more active roles in leadership. Um, so there's this perceived lack of leadership in certain areas of healthcare, and uh, people in, our, in my role are trying to fill those those needs or meet those needs as best we can. Um, and you know, healthcare is 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 probably the most interprofessional uh, field that I can think of. So we have to work very closely with our physician peers, very closely with our our therapy team. Um, and without that kind of very close collaboration, that multidisciplinary um, collaboration, everything kind of falls apart. The wheels come off rather quickly. Um, so yeah, interprofessional, interprofessionalism is, is very highly valued. We learned in the last meeting that you have a PhD in physics, which involved a thesis project, which is a consider considerably challenging degree. Um, were there any points in your education where you doubted yourself? Yeah. Uh, it's probably easier to count the moments where I didn't doubt myself. <laughs> uh, I'm honest. Um, it was a very challenging time for me. Um, that's not to say that it would be that difficult for everyone else. I, I just found it uh, a struggle at times. I came with a, a chemistry background, strictly speaking. So I had some gaps uh, in my knowledge that I had to fill along the way uh, through a, grad, get a graduate school. And I, I suppose I pulled it off. Um, so yeah, I had a lot of doubts and those rare times where I didn't have doubts or I guess where I would, was most likely to get caught and get in trouble. So I think it's actually kind of normal and healthy to doubt yourself, uh, when you're going through a period like that. And, and even true, this is even true in undergrad, uh, it just kind of keeps you on your toes, uh, and, and keeps yourself in check. So that was something that I need to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so if, if just, if whoever's listening to this is, is finding them doubting themselves or they feel that that imposter syndrome ramping up, uh, that's okay. It's normal and you can turn it into a good thing. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to add for our listeners today? I don't think so. Um, I just, other than to say thank you for the opportunity to chat with you and, uh, and to share some insights into what I do and what our day is like as a medical physicist. We, it's not a lot of opportunity to share that. Um, so that was fun. Yeah, I think we're really thankful to have the opportunity to talk to you too. Like, thank you for taking the time out of your day today. Like, it's been a really great conversation. I feel like we've learned a lot, like a lot of stuff that we didn't know before. And like you said, like there's not a ton of opportunities in your field to share that. So I'm really glad that we got this opportunity to learn from you. Um, yeah, I think we had a lot of great conversations. Um, and thank you to everyone who tuned in to another episode of the Interprofessional Health Talks. We hope that you enjoyed this episode as much as we did. As always, you can find us at UOttawa IPHA on social platforms. Bye.